Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we got a little problem with our Weber kettle grill they're going to try to solve. And I'm going to bring you guys along because I've never done this myself. So y'all stay tuned. So here's the problem. Our one touch cleaning system completely locked up. And uh, I know the reason probably is because, you know, let's take the lid off here real quick. Um, I cook a lot on this thing low and slow and I hardly ever remember to put a drip pan in the bottom so it's gotten all gummed up in there so I was like well maybe we could just take it apart and clean it and then I got to looking at it a little more closely you see how all the grease is dripped on this side I did chicken at last but I got to looking and see these yep uh, yep that's already almost burnt completely off so just cleaning it ain't gonna fix it we're gonna have to replace that part okay so here's the decision you're gonna have to make a you think you're gonna have the skills to replace that part yourself because you know these grills are not that expensive brand new I did consider uh, just getting a new one and then uh, you know I got a lot of good seasoning built up on that thing over I've had it for five years and I guarantee there's been over a thousand cooks done on it so I jumped on our Amazon store over there hit that search bar right up at the top because we don't have this on there yet so anytime you go to the Amazon store and you don't see something you want just use the search bar what I did and voila the first thing I, I put a little search in there for the uh, Weber parts and uh, there you go right there so that's for the 22 inch one touch grill this was fourteen dollars all right uh, thing is I don't have prime I don't know why uh, so I said well it's not meeting the twenty five dollar minimum order for free shipping so I started looking at the other recommended frequently bought together things and then I seen the charcoal baskets and I went hmm I could use those and these are only like thirteen dollars so between the two, I, I met the uh, minimum shipping and got free shipping for both parts. So I ended up getting this. If I'd have had to pay shipping on that one, I ended up getting this for like six bucks. Because the shipping would have been like six bucks for that. So we're going to figure out how to install this. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to go take that grill outside. So let's go yeah, ahead and open this up and uh, get out the instructions. I got the grill uh, rinsed all out. Let's see what's all in here. Okay. There's uh, the three blades, control rod. So we got a couple other pieces. I don't know how easy this is going to come apart in uh, in the old one. It's pretty rusty, but we're going to find out. We got some we got some tools standing by to, to help if we need. So you guys are, are seeing it at this is uh, as it's as it's happening here. So. Hopefully, I'm going to read these directions for you so you don't have to spend the time. You can just watch this video. So the directions are fully pictorial, okay? No written words in here. So this is grill is sold all over the world, so I can see it. But it's pretty self-explanatory of how it comes apart. We're going to use a flathead screwdriver to go under and, and loosen the tab on the on the rod, the, uh, the control rod. And we're going to turn it and pull it out, and then all this stuff's going to fall apart, hopefully. But, you know, that thing's pretty rusty and pretty gummed up, so I don't expect it to go that easily. It's a little different for the one if you have just the plain Weber, um, the, the more standard version. That one has a little, just a little lock nut, uh, wing nut, uh, tab nut, whatever you want to call it. You loosen that up and pull the rod out, and it comes apart a little different. But right now, let's uh, go ahead and see if we can get that old part out. Yeah, as you can see, uh, this is really bad down here uh, looks like all the pieces are really corroded I guess like maybe that's just grease too that's stripped down and it says we can get in here and loosen this up it's pretty bad it's gonna take some digging on it and this ring is kind of in the way um, I don't know Look, I don't think I can take that off, uh, but we might try get a little better access to it. 
see if we can bend these tabs up. I think we can pop this ring off. That'll give us a little better angle. Maybe we can work it out of there. Yeah, we can work that right out of there. <sighs> so, yeah, this is pretty bad. I'm gonna keep digging on this thing. So maybe we can get this twist out of there. I'm thinking that's gonna be a tall order. Yeah, this thing is just really crusted up. Let's keep digging on it. I'll get a little brush maybe. And if that don't work, we're gonna bring out some, uh, some mo power. All right, so I dig on it a little bit more. I got my channel lock pliers. Oh, okay, here we go, released. Some channel lock pliers. I don't know if we'll be able to get it to slide out of there or not. Here we go. There's a little notch. You got to get lined up in there for that to come out. Now I'm pretty sure we're going to need to hammer to tap down on it. There we go. All right, things are falling apart now. All right. I'm going to reach on the other side and grab it. Alrighty. Now let's clean this up. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and assemble the fins. Uh, looking with the pictures, they want you to hold uh, this part here with this hole to your left hand side. All right, and then these, each one of these little fins, wings I call them, are numbered. This is one, I got them spread out, one, two, and three. So it shows you to drop this down with that. See, that's going to line up with that hole. That hole's going to line up with this. All right, now the next one says to go with number two. You're going to slide it down through the tab, two tabs. You're going to slide right through two. And obviously, three. We line them up. Pops right together. It kind of holds nice and tight. Like holds them nice and tight to lead together. So we got our. Uh, we're finishing cleaning up the bottom of the grill real good. I I did spray a little bit of uh, oven cleaner right into this circle where this operates because I want these to be uh, nice and tight to the bottom of the bowl like it used to be when it was new and uh, really allowed you to uh, really crank that thing down low. So all we gotta do now is put it down, back down in, put the washer on the bottom, slide the rod back in. So we got uh, this thing put together, got it cleaned out down in there. Now it says, uh, directions say to put your, uh, your fin mark number one towards where your handle is gonna poke out, poke out, which of mine is right here to the left of the front. So that's where we're going to go ahead and drop it right down through the hole that fits nice and tight with kind of a spring action. So then we'll try to put the rod in, so we'll see how that goes. All right, so prepare to do this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pre-stage my control rod. Is uh, I haven't figured out how to make all this stuff stay together. I'm going to have to try to hold this from the bottom. So I've brought it up here on my double burner propane stove and uh, I gotta get it back in the hole and we gotta orient that fin number one okay, so. uh. oh sorry uh, uh, okay now this little washer goes down over there, and our rod sticks right in there. All right, we got that part licked. Now they're, okay, I must have did it backwards because the little tab that I need is on the other side. So let's take it out and spin it. Let's 
been a whole thing. Now, I'm going to turn that little tab to the center and then twist it and it clicks right in. Hey, look at there, we're working again. So let's test it out again. Beautiful. Completely damped off. Alright. So let's get the rest of our parts and uh, put it back together. We'll be ready to cook. may have to bend those tabs out a little bit. It seems a little loose at the bottom, so let's do that real quick. I have fixed it right up. Ready for another great cook. So overall, the Weber 3-in-1 repair kit for the 22-inch Weber kettle grill was fairly easy to install. I only had to use a hammer and a screwdriver. I did have a pair of pliers there just to assist to loosen that handle up because mine was really rusty. Yours may not be that bad. Like I said, we've used this grill. I've had it for six years, and we use it three times a week at minimum. And, hey, I've cooked a lot of competitions on that, too. So it's seen, it's seen a lot and a lot of use, and I think the 14 bucks to put it back in good work and order again, plus I still got my seasoning inside there, you know, and that's important. So if I'd have went and brought a brand new one, it would have been start over on that part of it. But uh, if you love your grill as much as I do, but it needs a little help, check us out on Amazon. Thanks for watching the Backwoods Gourmet. Hey, stay tuned and make sure you hit that subscribe button because next time we're going to be using these, the, the Weber charcoal baskets for the kettle grill and we're gonna do something low and slow we'll see you next time so overall the uh, the new replacement one touch kit for the Weber charcoal chimney uh, well it's not charcoal chimney Ugh.